In today's video, I'm going to show how to select the perfect woodsman's hatchet. One blow. The notion that a heavy hunting knife can do the work of a hatchet is delusional. Barked trees. Every woodsman should carry a hatchet, and when purchasing one, you need to be as selective as you would when purchasing a gun. When it comes to cleaving carcasses, splitting the pelvis of big game, splitting kindling, blazing thick barked trees, making and pounding tent stakes, making and driving trapping stakes, or just keeping a bivouac fire going. The knife never was made that will compare with a good hatchet. The common hatchets found at a hardware store are unfit for a woodsman's use. The problem with your hardware hatchets is they're going to have a broad blade, a real sharp taper, wedge-like, and made out of some really brittle steel. On the other hand, a proper hatchet should have the edge and the temper of a good axe. You can see here on the right the nice thin grind versus the heavy taper with the strong bevel on there. This is fine for splitting wood car camping, but it's not a good cutter. A proper hatchet should bite deep in the wood. See the difference in the bite between the hardware store axe, which didn't even want to stick in the wood, versus a properly ground woodsman's axe? It's probably... almost uh, three quarters to an inch more of a cut uh, using the same amount of force. Even a lot of your really high quality axes uh, are not going to be ground properly. As you can see here, this is the bevel, the edge on it. You can see how far back that grind is. I've brought that back much further than it was originally. What you want is penetration when you're cutting. That's how you can work a lot less and do a, get a lot more work done. But still you have a nice bit of taper there for splitting wood. As we said before, the majority of our work is going to be cutting, not splitting. Where here you have your hardware axe, a very strong taper on it, a flat bevel on there, and just an overall club of a design, a poor design, and not an efficient tool whatsoever. Here's a real good example of a perfect little axe head uh, for woodsman's use. As you can see, it's got a nice thin cutting edge, a good taper for splitting. Uh, I've worked this edge back and brought this relief back, and this is razor sharp. This axe most likely was ground from a larger head. You'll find this very often with old ones. This most likely came over here and was a little bit bigger. Uh, this has got a little bit more of a beard on it than I would like. This section here is called beard, um, but I could consider taking maybe a half inch of that out, but it's still usable the way it is. Hand forged, you can see, old, good quality steel, most likely Swedish, but this is an ideal woodsman's axe head. Proper woodsman's axe is going to be kept razor sharp, and you need to have a good sheath. And you don't need to spend a lot of money, you can make one simple. This here was made out of an old tool belt, uh, using some Chicago screws, and a piece of strap and leather, and it's as simple as that. You want something with rivets on the front, and the rivets, want to, you need them to be either copper or brass. Brass, those metals are softer than the steel edge, and if it comes in contact, it's not going to uh, uh, mar or chip the edge. And also prevents the, the blade from coming through and cutting not only yourself, but someone else. The ideal woodsman hatchet is going to be in length about 16, 18, maybe 19 inches, and with a weight of about a pound and a half to two and a quarter pounds. And it should fit nicely inside your rucksack. So now that you know kind of what to look for in a proper woodsman's hatchet, uh, where do you find one? Well, there's several companies out there that are making really good ones. Grand Force Brooks, for example. Uh, Wetterlings out of Sweden, another one. Uh, of course, John Neiman Company or the Autin Company are making them. Um, uh, a good budget model is the Husqvarna 
uh, they're making one, or actually marketing one, that's made by Wetterlings, it's really a great value, um, a good place to start. Or, uh, if you don't want to spend that type of money, you can uh, hit the flea markets, or even on eBay, or find something like this. Find something old, um, Swedish, or Austrian, or German, or American steel, um, 100 year old hatchet and you can spend time. I've got several videos on how to bring these edges back. Uh, make something that's really special. Uh, make your own handle. And don't be intimidated about making a handle. It doesn't have to have these store-bought fancy curves in them. There has been uh, woodsmen for, woodsmen for years that have had actually preferred straight handles, not only in their hatchets, but also their axes, even single-bladed axes. Uh, many of them for years use straight handles. It's much easier to make and um, it can be quite effective and you may find you, you even prefer it. So, good place to start. Let me show you a couple techniques that will help you to use your hatchet more effectively. When getting ready to fall a small tree, I think the biggest mistake I see people do is uh, putting too much force, trying to swing too hard. You need to make every blow count. It doesn't do any good to, to use all your strength and to blow yourself out after three or four minutes of exhaustion um, and be ineffective. A tool that's ground properly and bites well and that's aimed properly doesn't have to take, doesn't take very many strokes to fall a tree. It should be like a machine, like a trip hammer. Same strength, same effort each time. Ideally, the width of your kerf should be almost identical to the diameter of the tree. A couple strokes on the back side. This tree is ready to fall. With the tree down, you should be able to separate it from the stump with one decisive stroke. So if you need to buck the tree into manageable pieces, the inexperienced man does the same thing every time. He starts at the top chopping. It may seem like a good idea until you realize that ultimately you're going to put your hacks, axe or hatchet into the ground, which is a cardinal sin and something you never, never want to do. The experienced man chops from the side. By chopping from the side, halfway through, changing directions, when you make that final cut that comes through and the axe swings through penetrating the two pieces, you're not going to put your edge in the rock gravel or in the dirt uh, and chip and break the edge of your axe. And one more tip, if you find yourself falling timber, small trees on really stony rocky ground, before you fall it, make sure you put down a, pieces, a couple pieces of wood. Oftentimes the branches will keep it up off the ground, but not always. By having a couple of these, it will keep it off the ground and you're less likely to put your hatchet in the gravel or in a rock. Because a nick in your axe will make your work doubly hard. When logging up the limbs, it's a good idea to start from the base and work your way up. And until you get more experience, cut the limbs opposite to you. That way if you glance or miss, you have the log itself that's protecting you uh, from getting cut. A properly sharpened hatchet won't take more than one blow to remove a limb. In all that you do in the woods, do it neatly and with pride. For example, taking all the limbs that you remove for the tree that you're going to use, and if they're not usable for firewood, stack them up neatly in a pile, butt ends, all facing uphill. This will make a great habitat for small animals and squirrels and look so much better than leaving everything strewn all over the place. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.